I heard about a couple who had moved to the woods to live in a tiny home without electricity. They are private people and had turned down TV interviews, but they invited me for a visit with my camera. Innermost House is about 12 feet square. There's no electricity, no hot water, and yet my husband and I lead a life of luxury here. When I first saw Michael and Diana's Northern California home, I felt I'd step back in time. But the longer I stayed, the more I felt the place really defied time. Diana says you enter timeless time here, and without the distractions of modern life, it's easy to forget about everything but the moment. I arrived late morning in December, when the winter sun was playing with the large oak that embraced the small structure. Light here is magical. Without incandescence or compact fluorescence to worry about, the sun, candles, and fire become hyper-present. Fire is a necessity. It heats the home and bathing water, and it is a couple's only stove or oven. It also provides a soundtrack to the day. No refrigerator means no meat, no ice cream, but vegetables taste like the sun and earth without hint of cold storage. With just one pot, meals are simple. This pot is this size for a reason. I can fill the whole thing up and we can still eat every bite. <laughs> but it's also enough for three people if we eat more moderately. So this way I never have to keep track of how much we need to eat. I just put in as much as I can possibly squeeze and we eat the whole of it. Here we are. What do you think it is that draws people to simplify their lives? I never did simplify my life. I was always saying no. As a child, I couldn't understand the pleasure that people took in things. I asked Diana why she came here seven years ago. She says she was looking for emptiness. But over time, that has changed. Now she is here, like her husband, in search of completeness. Diana calls her quest the conversation. She writes, what is the conversation? It is what found me. It's the marriage between the moving word and the waiting silence. It's waking into the silent emptiness before dawn and feeling a question form within you that only reason can answer. It's listening for the soft sounds of the woods and the murmur of the spirit over the waters. It's forever the first morning, again and again. I visited many tiny homes and marveled at many space-saving contraptions. And while innermost house is only about 12 feet square, it doesn't feel small, and the objects inside it are all normal-sized. Diana tells me they don't think of their house as tiny, but just right. It reminds me of something Emerson once wrote. We ascribe beauty to that which is simple, which has no superfluous parts, which exactly answers its end, which stands related to all things. Emerson is here, and every one of the great minds in the books chosen to live here contribute in some way to Michael and Diana's innermost lives. I've been a guest of Innermost House twice now, and during neither visit have we discussed the details of construction. Instead, the fur ceiling and gypsum plaster walls have melted away and left only our conversation. Would you consider yourself a Luddite? I don't even know what a Luddite is. Just, could you look it up? Luddite, a member of a group of early 19th century English workmen 
engaged in attempts to prevent the use of labor-saving machinery by destroying it. Oh dear. Well, I am not a Luddite. <laughs> I am perfectly happy with the entire world living exactly as it wishes. But I would live my life the way I wish. And I would have others know. Not others who don't want to live this way, but others like the person I used to be when I didn't know there were any options. I didn't know there could be another way. I'm not trying to persuade anybody of this life, but I would offer it as an alternative to those who are hungry for it, as I was hungry for something I couldn't identify. While perhaps there's nothing sublime in the home's materials, the whole that emerges here hints at something loftier. French author Antoine de Saint-Exupéry once wrote, Perfection is achieved not when there is nothing more to add, but when there is nothing left to take away. <laughs>